The following program is rated E. Today on City Line, Brian Gluckstein wants to save your relationship. Couples should do nothing together. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> really, it is just a recipe for disaster. A dishwasher loading lesson to avoid a major stress point. I so, didn't think you had a domestic bone in your body. You're like proving me wrong right it's now. True, it's he knows true. some stuff. Ben, class is in session with Chef Massimo. It is the easiest one to do and the most easy not to screw up. Have Size. you met me? And later, how to elevate your rental space. I think when I talk about, oh, I really want you an 80s glam room that's very dark and black. Oh, is he going to have print? Of course I am. This is Christian Dare. There's going to be print on print on print. It's City Line with Tracy Moore. to City Line, it's home day. So we are gonna start with a little relationship therapy. Do you want some therapy? Okay, how many of you load the dishwasher? How many of you have disagreements with your partner on how that dishwasher should be loaded? Oh, I love that you're honest. Good, it is a big issue. 40% of couples fight over loading the dishwasher. I would like to pretend I'm surprised I'm not. So here to show us how he does it, which is obviously the right way, please welcome Brian Gluckstein. <laughs> you know the right way. I try. You, we're gonna, we're gonna learn a little bit from you today. I feel sort of like a 1950s homemaker, so this is the you right place fabulous. for me to be, right? Yes, yes. Gonna and be even in the though kitchen with you. Even though I've been designing dinnerware for 20 years, my partner still thinks I don't know how to stack a dishwasher. You, so it is a yeah. problem. It is you a problem. two have roles in the kitchen. What's we do. Gary's role? Uh, cooking. Okay, so what so, should be your role, Mr. Gluckstein? It should be cleaning. Right. It should be cleaning, and I like to do that. I do like to clean. Okay, so what's the problem? Um, you know, people. I was just saying, couples should do nothing together. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> really, it is just a recipe for disaster. Gardening, yeah. Yeah. you know, painting. Sleeping in the same bed. We've talked about that on the together. show. Just separate exactly. and your marriage will last forever. Exactly. Right? Try not to talk to each other. Just keep it exactly. separate. But, but, but dishwashers are a big thing. I don't know why people argue over a dishwasher. It's just one of those things that you can have control over. And I think people feel very strongly about how they do it. So I've already told you this, and his jaw dropped to the ground. I am the dish, these are the dishwashers in my house. Leo yeah. and I wash the dishes by hand. So please welcome me into your world of loading the of dishwasher, a, of please. A, of an automated dishwasher. Yes, show I, me this machine that you all exactly. are using. Exactly, well I say to Gary, if he starts to say anything, I'm like, you should just be happy I'm doing it. Right. Exactly, <laughs> don't give me a hard time. That's right. But one of the things you really have to do and notice is you might have a glass like this. Okay. But the bottom is not flat. The bottom is concave. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure the glass or the mug, see the way this mug has an indented shape yes. in the bottom? Yeah. You want to make sure you put that on an angle. Okay? Because, because if you don't. You get dirty water sitting there and you open the dishwasher drawer. And I'm sure you've all had that. Yeah. You pull out the rack yeah. and it's. There's dirty water in there. So you want to make sure all of that is on an angle. What's so interesting is that that explains, like we do use the dishwasher when we when we have parties, but that explains why all of these are slanted. I never understood that. I thought it was just so that you could fit more. Well, people straddle it like that. You right. know, they'll put it in the middle and then it's flat. But that's so wrong. You want to put it in the middle. And Got then it. your dishwasher often has this piece that flips down. Yeah. That's for your stemware. And you want to make sure your stemware is, these tongs are to keep the glass is separate, and you really can't jam them in because you're gonna bang them and chip them. Right. So you wanna make sure that if they move around, they're, they're not gonna, gonna stay. hit each other. You may not get as many as you would want, but that's really the way you have to do that. Okay, our glasses are done. Uh, can you throw that in the dishwasher for me? Where are you putting your plates? Okay, so the plates go at the back. Okay. Everything that's tall, 
goes at the back because the soap comes from the front. Oh. So pots, pans, you don't put them at the front because it stops the soap from oh, getting in. Okay. So you put the tall things at the back yep. and the short things at the, at the front. Use the same, don't put a little one in between. Okay. And then with the bowls. So specific. Very specific. See okay. again. Another little divot. Little divot, so you want yeah. to make sure it's not flat. Okay. And make sure there's room in between. You want, you don't want them like that. Right. Because people try to jam you. Right, it's too much. Yes, and you'll find some things inside. Are we putting these in there? Well, you could. I, yeah. I typically wash them. Yeah. Um, but again, upside down and on an angle, you put them in this one, the upper one. Yeah. And with these, see, look at that. Like it's that. not going to get clean, no, is it? No, so you've got to do it like that. Okay. And then, um, uh, these again, you want to put them on an angle so that the point goes down inside so they don't sort of flop nice. over the place. I so, didn't think you had a domestic bone in your body. You're like proving me wrong it's right now. True, it's he true. knows some stuff. I design houses and I know how to clean them. You know how to clean, I them. Know how to clean them. Same Very with nice. these. Okay. Same with these, always on an angle. Okay. So the water drains off of them. Bru uh, beautiful. Okay, I do are we putting this in no. the dishwasher? I didn't think so. No. Don't put <laughs> Do not what? put that no. in No, you gotta get the cheese off by hand. Yeah, you gotta get in there. Um, I imagine these might be a bit of an issue. I would wash this. Typically, I wash pots and pans. Teddy. Some people do uh, put their pots and pans in the dishwasher, yeah. and you have um, your tongs, uh, here they are in this one. Okay. Your tongs pull down. Mm -hmm. So, um, some of the pots like these are very, cast iron are very heavy. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to bend the tongs in the dishwasher, but you can fold oh, these down. Oh, they go down. Yeah, so there. Got it. So if you want to if you want to put that in there, you have the space to put right. it in Right. Oh, just wash that by hand. I okay, we're almost out of time, and I need to talk about the most controversial thing. Yes, if you're buying the a new... The cutlery. What are we doing with well, the cutlery? Well, if you're buying a new dishwasher, I prefer dishwashers with the rack at the top okay. as opposed to the basket. You probably all have the basket. Yeah. I don't really like this. Like, I don't like knives sticking up, and they're all on top of each other. Right. You do have spacers. Some of them have spacers like this, but it's, again, you've got all these sharp things coming up. Yeah. So I prefer this. Okay. And you, again, the same items fit between the tongs. Oh, isn't that beautifully done? Yes, and you can fit a lot of cutlery in this. But the, At home, you won't tip it over like that, but no, you get the point. But I want to show you that the center section oh, okay. yeah. flips down, okay. and that's where you put these items. Oh, so you got a little more space. Okay. Oh. So that's why these are so great. Like, you can fit so much cutlery in here. They're not touching each other. Yeah. They're not rattling around. It leaves more space on the rack, and then these big pieces go on the... Um, on the glass tray, they don't go Got in there. It. And again, make sure these are down, not like this, because they're just gonna fill up with dirty water. Okay, I'm just gonna send a quick text to Gary and see what he thinks. Yes. He should Great be happy tips. I do it. <laughs> And I think you did it well. Thanks to uh, Hudson's Bay uh, for all that, that beautiful dishware. And Hudson's Bay would like to send someone shopping for the latest Gluckstein housewares at the Bay. So we're going to draw for a 250 gift card, and you can buy all of his great stuff with that if you win it, which is awesome. Good. That's nice. Good. Let's go to break. we got more coming up. Stay with us. Coming up, Chef Massimo shares an old family recipe for ravioli. Just Use load it. it up. Yeah, lots of it. Nice. Uh, yeah, that, that's what my mother would do. Taste buds for a culinary adventure exploring the art of making ravioli. But hold your forks. Before we dive into the little pockets of joy, we've got to craft them, starting with the epic fillings. So here to show us three different stuffing options for your ravioli, Chef Massimo Capra, the one and only, the only Hello. one we would be doing a segment like this with. I mean, this is close to your heart, ravioli, right? Uh, yeah, yes, it is, actually. It's a, it's a normal thing for me to have a... A, a meat-filled tortellino or mm. a raviolino in uh, in uh, Sundays, you know. Yes, generally. beautiful. Yeah. So we've got three fillings. The yep. first one up. You can eat this if you are vegetarian. Or no, let's start with meat. Let's start with meat because that's yeah. your favorite, let's, right? Yeah. This is a, this is a very standard on small ravioli. You never make a big ravioli with meat in it. Okay. You always make the little one. That's why 
are we going to make in your latte after, okay. after? Yes, oh, yeah, get ready. I know, get ready. I know, I'm going to so, be working. Very simple. You can use any meat you want. I mean, mm -hmm. even, uh, even lamb, pork, chicken, lamb, uh, veal, beef, whatever is available. Yep. And on top of it, this uh, comes out of an idea of using leftovers. Okay, right. so if you have a roast on Sunday or you have some barbecue that you haven't uh, burned too much, you can grind it. <laughs> it's possible. It's, it's possible. possible. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> you can actually mix a nice ravioli as long as there's not too much of that, that, that sweet sauce on it. Yeah. But the meat, you grind it all up, okay, and then all you have to do is really add uh, mortadella, and okay. generally, it's either mortadella or prosciutto crudo. That's, that's a lot. I'm going to save some. Okay. Uh, a little bit of breadcrumb. This will give a little bit of air in it and will make it a little bit more palatable. Otherwise, you, you get too much of the meaty flavor. Okay. Okay. Then egg, obviously. Yeah. Uh, egg is in everything. Was it the All whole, right. it was, it's This is the a whole, whole egg. egg right? I just beat it uh, slightly. Okay. A little bit of salt, not too much. Uh, nutmeg. Nutmeg, okay. very important. I'm using ground nutmeg over here, but you know, this is a nice amount of nutmeg. And a little goes a long way uh, oh, with yes, the nutmeg? Yes. Well, I put, you can put as much as you like. Okay. I mean, the other thing is magic because uh, tortellini and all of the stuff is from the Emilia Romagna region. We got Grana Padano, we have Parmigiano Reggiano, mm -hmm. so just Use load it. it up. Yeah, lots of it. Nice. Uh, yeah, that, that's what my mother would do. Put another little bit just for. Uh, Safety. Just for extra love. So, now, because we want to be quick, we yeah. use our hands. So I'm using my glove because I don't like to get my hands dirty too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we, precious hands. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, you know it. You know it. <laughs> Last time I was here, I had the cast on, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So how's that feeling now? Oh, yeah, it feels great. Okay, good. Yeah, I keep smacking. You never realize how many knuckles you have until you smack them every day. Yes. And then you're like, this hurts. <laughs> I use like, these wow. a lot. Okay. So this is ready. Okay. That's done. So we got right? one meat and filling. And you want it exactly. You want it dry like that because. Technically, mm -hmm. what you will see these ladies on uh, videos, if you follow the social media, mm -hmm. you will see them just doing little, little knob like that. Okay. You know what I mean? On on the yeah. on the door. So yeah. there you go. Uh, put it there. We'll deal with it after. You'll see what happens now. So next up, well, uh, we're I'm going to be dealing with that afterwards. So thank you for doing oh, such a good job. Yeah, mm, you like it? That's delicious. Okay. Okay. We're going to do the cheese one now. Ricotta. Vegetarian option. Ricotta. Yeah. Um, Lots of mozzarella. We are making caprese. Okay, this is caprese. That capri. already looks good capri. to me. A little bit of parmigiano, a little bit less. Uh-huh. Egg. Mm-hmm. Okay, same thing. Pepper. Good. A little nutmeg. I'm going to help you with the third one because yeah. we only have like a minute left. Okay, let's do it. The other one is potato. Mm-hmm. Potatoes, okay? Yeah. So this one, it will mix and we'll have it already. This okay. is fish. Again, if you have leftover fish, just grind it all up. What it's kind of fish cooked. did you use? This is sea bass, okay. and this is a recipe. Oh, mamma mia. That's okay, I'll what use a mess. the rest. It's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> we have I people have here who will clean it. It's no, me, look. I'll clean it. <laughs> there you go. Done. Mix that. Okay, but you want some of that? You want some parsley. Okay. You want some marjoram. I'm going to do it the, your way. I, that's yeah, why I do put it, the do glove it, do on. Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do okay. it. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Get it all out, get it okay. all out. Don't worry about it. All right. I'm doing this in the meantime. Look at my face. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, and we forgot. Marjoram goes into the caprese as well. Whoopsies. Because we are by the sea. Do we I are need in Capri. Here? I did already. Okay, thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, didn't even see. Thanks, Chef. And there you go. These are the three fillings that yeah. we're going to use after. Okay? okay, so. And it has to be like that nice and pasty. Okay, okay squeeze this it is in the nicely. Right. I wouldn't make it by machine because that will destroy the mozzarella and you want the mozzarella to be stringy. Okay. When it warms up, right? Oh, I mean, I love it makes that. all of it. Exactly. I cannot wait to deal with all of these fillings. Um, we're going to tell you what we're going to be doing with them a little bit later. <laughs> Head over to cityline.tv for these amazing recipes, and we're going to there break. Go. More coming up. I can't stop. I spent uh, that. Coming up, I dare you to find a more stylish rental unit. How do I make it feel like a chic hotel lobby, sophisticated, a little bit sexy? We just kind of want to hang out.
If you are renting and seeking simple DIY upgrades, we've got you covered. Here to share renter-friendly tips on sprucing up your space live from his new apartment is DIY design expert Christian Taylor. <laughs> Christian, it is so good to see you. I'm, I'm so happy we are finally in your space. We've been talking about this for a while. So what was the inspiration for this rental redesign? So the inspiration for this is like, I always say you should be, don't compete with your space. So you'll see, I obviously got a 1980s condo. It's got parquet floors, it's got lots of mirror. And I say work with it instead of competing against it. So I was thinking 80s, early 80s glam, but then I also like to tell people, always think about when you're going to use this space. So I'm often busy. I'm away from home all day. So it's very much a nighttime space. And I think a lot of us don't design our houses based on nighttime. So literally, I was like, nighttime, 80s glam. I was like, oh, hotel lobbies. So that really was my very big inspiration was like, how do I make it feel like a chic hotel lobby, sophisticated, a little bit sexy, where you just kind of want to hang out? You are always very good about being on theme, but not doing it in a way that's so literal. Because you've done our studio in so many different iterations, and you always nail it. So I'm excited to see this one. Now, let's talk storage. I always find storage is a really tough part of the entrance to any home. Do you have tips for the boots, the shoes, the jacket, the storage? What, what should we be doing? <laughs> I do. So I actually am lucky. I actually have two vestibules in this apartment, which is kind of weird. It's very much an 80s classic thing. So at the front, I've got lots of closet. But what's interesting is this second space, I literally had no idea what to do with it. Because in theory, behind that bookcase is a door to a kitchen that I covered over with just a bookcase. And then there's a door to a living room, a door to a bedroom. So it was a lot of space. So I actually put in these faux built-ins that actually are filled with storage. This one isn't shoes. This is all sorts of DIY accessories. But it was a great way to make that extra storage because it's just right off the front hall. So you literally could have all your extra shoes over here. I also love it because it was like, how do you then create a secondary space that's usable versus just like a hallway with a table in the middle that's just kind of a crossways, right? And I don't know about you. I don't necessarily need two exits and entrances to my kitchen. I'm not in there that often. <laughs> Christian, you're sort of like me and Brian then, right? <laughs> you only need to be in there when you need to be in there. And you know what? I must... Yeah, and mostly to make a cocktail. <laughs> and mostly to make a cocktail. I must know you very well, because as soon as you said 80s glam, I'm like, he's going dark. And there you went dark. And it looks chic, and I love the drama of it. So let's talk about elevating the space. So literally what it is, it's actually Billy IKEA bookcases. So they're not that fancy. But literally, I planned them so they would go wall to wall. So it feels like a built-in without actually spending the money on a built-in. And then instead of designing it like a traditional bookcase, I designed it more like a hotel lobby that has oversized bookcases. So it literally is about mixing in art with vases, with pieces of sculpture, and then still pieces of art, uh, sorry, books. So it still feels kind of like a library, but more of an arty library. I want to put in a giant oversized chair that's very much on trend. It's a great place to just like chill out, do your own photo shoots, to be honest, but also read books. And then I also say, because there's so much art on this wall, I actually hung one oversized piece off center on this wall, which I think people would think, why is it justified all the way to the right? But it creates that balance for you. Oh, it's beautiful and it's lit. I love the art, the lighting on the piece of art there. That's beautiful. So we're going to move now uh, into your, the next part of your space. You're going to give us a peek at your living room. Let's talk about what was happening there before. Yeah, so the previous living room was this giant oversized white box of mostly boringness. Um, but what's great is it's actually really, really big. Like it's almost like 12 feet by 20 feet. And then it actually overlooked a dining room, which I mean, I've already told you I don't eat that much, so I didn't need a dining room. So it was like, how do you recreate that space? So what I think can be really tricky when people think about layouts is, oh, the only wall is over there. I have to put my TV on that wall. And then your sectional would kind of block off the room. It would feel awkward. So I would actually like kind of cheated. <laughs> and I found this great TV from Samsung. It's called the Seraph. And it actually has legs. Oh. So you do not need to hang it on the wall. It has a completely covered up back. So when it's TV time, we actually just move the TV right here. Mm -hmm. It's often here, to be honest with you. But I want it to seem fancier, like we don't watch that much TV. Um, <laughs> and you can watch that TV without feeling like you have to center your entire room on a giant wall. 
uh, we just need to talk about this sectional. Do you want to go lie, like spread out on that <laughs> sectional right now? How long is that sectional? Oh, yeah. How tall are you? What is going so on here? So I'm six here? feet. <laughs> it's literally what I love about this sectional is it's so big that two or three people can have full out naps or sleepovers on this sectional, which is amazing. <laughs> it's great for entertaining. It's great for parties. And I think a lot of people are scared when they're doing rentals of buying a giant sectional, but I opted for one that's modular. So each piece can be separated. So it's actually a couch I brought from another house and it was set up in a very different formation. You could actually split it into two pieces. It makes it easy and kind of multifunctional. And then the other trick I love to do that's, to be honest, hotel lobby inspired, is small multiple coffee tables. Mm -hmm. So instead of a giant clunky one, you literally could move them around so people could have little intimate conversations and still have room for their drinks. And you don't have that giant clunky coffee table to get in the way. How do you style it? How do you design it? So it creates that sort of openness to the space, which is nice. That's beautiful. So you've got the nesting tables, you've got the gigantic sectional. Anything else in that space that you want to point out for us, Christian? Because so far that is well, so well also done. Like, <laughs> yeah, so what I love is I've broken probably every designer's rules that talk about it. As you see, I have way more than three pillows on this sofa, um, <laughs> which I think is fine when you have a giant sofa. And it's all about mixing and matching them, right? So it's like doing that oversizedness, that over print on print on print, which I think is interesting. I think when people think I talk about, oh, I really want to do an 80s glam room that's very dark and black. Oh, is he going to have print? Of course I am. This is Christian Dare. There's going to be print on print on print. But if you keep them within the same tones, it doesn't feel busy. Like this is not New Orleans. I'm not doing pinks and greens and florals, but it still has that great sophistication. It looks absolutely stunning. And thank you for showing us that just because it's a rental, you know, it doesn't mean you should not be elevating your space. You've done all sorts yeah. of gorgeous glam details that I think make the space so much more comfortable and stylish. Christian, thank you for that. We're going to be following you along for a while with this journey. Thank you. We've got more City Line happening after the break. Stay with us, everyone. More coming up. Coming up, how to effectively use art in your home decor. I'm going to give you some tips on what to pull from to complete a space. Art. Adding art into a space can be the finishing touch to tie it all together. It looks so good. Here with tips on what to look for in that art is designer Michael Lambie, who is finally back. <laughs> we finally get him back. It's so good to be back. It is good to have you here. You know, why do people find it so challenging to pick out art? You know, there's just so much options. And if you're not passionate about one particular thing, where do you go, right? Right. Like, it's your, it's, oh, it could be overwhelming. So yeah. if you do know that I have this piece or I have, I love puppies and you want to put puppies up, it's easy. Yes. But if not, then we got to use some extra tools or something a little different. I'm going to give you some tips on what to pull from to complete a space. Beautiful. So the art is not the space. So this is not the scenario where you want the art to be the focal point. It's if you want the art to support what you've done. So I'm sure the designers listening to this are like, please don't put puppies up all over your house. But if that's your thing, they will find you the right ones. So you've broken it down into different things that we can look for. And we're going to start with movement. Yes. So how does that work when it comes to your art and your decor? Right. So one of the goals of good design is to control the eye. We want you to look at certain things that we put effort into and mm. maybe avoid things that are not so great. Okay. Right. Yeah. So in an example like this, we had a condo that had beautiful views. It's a corner unit overlooked the lake downtown. Oh, beautiful. So there's nothing we're going to do that competes against that. Mm -hmm. And of course, like many living spaces, you'll have that big TV and fireplace. And when they're off, they're kind of just black boxes. They're duds. Mm -hmm. So you don't mm -hmm. really want to even actually accentuate that. So yeah. a scenario like this, what we did is we, instead of just having a, a stop, a point where you're actually looking at two, we want mm -hmm. the eye to move, we want the eye to move across and keep moving the area. So we picked a piece of art that has black stripes that kind of mimic what's happening over there. Mm -hmm. And then now what we're doing is we're creating these bands of lines right. visually that say, hey, keep the eye moving, keep the eye moving. It's not about vertical, it's about horizontal pressure. Sweep your eyes right across That's that it. space to where we want them to go. Exactly. Beautiful. And how does it work here in this picture? So here is a scenario where on the left behind the staircase, you actually go down to exit the house and on the right, 
you can see that there's a dining room. So in the middle, you got this wall, like it's an awkward wall, which is an eye stop. Right. And we don't want your eyes to go there. Okay. So instead of making this your focal point, mm -hmm. what we do is we're going to place a piece of art that actually directs your eyes in different directions because they're mm. dynamic. So I'm asking you to look this way, or I'm asking you to look this way. You're going to land because there's some power in it, but the, the, the lines are pulling you left and right. So you're directing the eye to the areas that you want to go mm -hmm. and not stay in the places that are not so attractive. That is cool. I like that. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about movement. Let's talk about interpretation or theme, because that might be the thing that you're tying everything around. Uh, how is that working in this space? Right, so in this particular bathroom, there's tile on the walls, and we have a theme already that's permanent. So we have these really cool graphic elements. There's circles, there's curves. Mm -hmm. It's even repeated in the light fixture. So we have, we know what we're doing here. Yeah. Now what's the picture that's gonna be there? Well, it's not really about the art here. What we did is we have something organic. It's like a, um, a abstract piece of art, yeah. a flower, which has, again, those themes, little circles on it, curves, flavors, and even the colors you can see are pulling from the wall, right? Nice. So now it just fits. Yes. It's not saying scream it. It's not screaming. Look at me. It's like I, I complete the space. I'm interpreting the same the same elements in two different ways. And it all looks intentional and it looks finished. Hundred percent. What's happening here? Here we're interpreting a wall that has some cool uh, lines on it, mm -hmm. some dynamic areas. And if you don't have one particular piece, maybe you go to a bunch. So what we did is just a bunch of uh, photographs, and we're going to mix them photographs with art which is not a bad thing to do in Collage Well. They don't yeah. have to be all one thing. Mm -hmm. But our theme here is obviously a lot of blacks and reds. Mm -hmm. So the art piece is black and red. So we got that relationship. We have a little bit of 3D happening with a black shelf. So now this collage, in the way we kind of composed, it makes an interesting shape. It kind of follows the lines of the architecture. It relates to it. And individually, one of these pictures wouldn't be enough for the wall, but as yeah. a collection, now it's something interesting as a collective. And all of these probably really represent the homeowner, right? 100%. The person that's living there, all of those have a personal touch that means something to them, which Ex is so cool. Exactly. You're not committing to one thing. Right. Either. Okay, next up, let's talk about uh, the repetition of color and pattern and texture, because that can help a lot when you are trying to tie in some art to a space. What yeah. have we got here? I on love the side? that. This is, this is fun. So, in this example, the rules of threes are being used with the, uh, the light fixtures on the side, which mm -hmm. is always powerful, right? Yeah. You have rules of threes. We kind of mimic that with how we're... I like those lights. I like all the light fixtures <laughs> you're showing us. They're so good. Yeah, they, they make such a powerful statement, mm -hmm. and we don't want to take away from that. We want to complement that. So, in the art piece, you'll see that we're repeating that. Right. The rules of threes, right? So, yeah. so now you start getting the... Uh, you start getting that that repetition very subtly. Yes, but it all makes sense together. Makes sense. And then we have this real cool texture on the wallpaper. Uh -huh. Well, that's a cool texture that's mimicked actually in this painting as well. So nice. you get the relationship between the two. Again, it's just blending. Yeah. So everything feels cohesive. And then this one. This one. All right. So we have this awesome print on the it's pillows. Swirly. swirly, colorful, also on the custom drapes of this fabric. So just to really accentuate that, we use the same colors in the artwork, the same sort of swirly textures in the, in the painting here, yeah. now it relates. It's not that we have to do the exact same thing there, but there's a relationship to it. Yeah. So again, this art is subtle in the background, but it completes the story. A subtle theme that works all together. Michael, thank you so much for your advice. Let's My go to pleasure. break. We have more coming up. Stay with us. That's so good. Coming up, it's Domestic Day with Brian Gluckstein, and that continues with some folding lessons. And it's a little messy, but... No, this is good. And you should see my linen closet. <laughs>Washer, remember that? Let's talk about folding sheets and towels, folding the fitted sheet. Okay, we've got a lesson. Guess who's gonna give the lesson? Brian Glugstein, okay? <laughs> this is a whole domestic day this with is, Brian. This is. So you have you have a few tips with us uh, for us when it comes to folding your sheets and because storing. and storing them because it's annoying. Exactly. And don't watch those videos. The videos, are, oh like on TikTok God, videos, people. they're very complicated. I we can't even follow easy, them. They, right? They're like this, and then it's like a perfect little <laughs> no. square. Like, right? I don't have time. No, I don't have time for that. I don't have time. Okay, so show us what you do. Okay, so um, I do two things. So okay. you can... Um, 
fold your sheet, just fold your fitted sheet as best you can. Like, don't try to look like Martha yeah. Stewart. Just, I mean, roll it into a ball for all I care. <laughs> just get it in and there. And flatten but it. But fold it as best you can. Yeah. And um, I end up putting uh, it all in a pillowcase. Smart. So when it's in the linen closet, you're, you put it all in there, so if it really mm. looks like a mess, and then you just put it in your pillowcase and then just put it on the shelf like I that. I think that's good. When and I that, fold it like that and shove it in something nice like that, it's as good as ironing it. It's as good as it's going <laughs> to get. It's as good as it's going to get. And that looks nice in your linen closet oh, because it's all, it keeps it all together. Yeah, it's all flat. Now, um, for the fitted sheet. Mm. So all you do, really, is you take two corners in your hand mm -hmm. and fold it over into the other four corners yep. like this. That's it. Call yep. it a day. Then... Put your flat sheet on the bed. Okay. Just lay it out on the bed. Then put this half fitted sheet on top of it. Okay. Then I want you to just take this and fold it so we don't care what the hell that <laughs> we don't care fitted what's happening sheet looks like. That top sheet. And just fold this like that. Okay. Okay. Let's make sure that's as neat as possible. This is already looking good. Okay. Then we fold it into threes. Oh. Okay. okay, let me just do a little more. Fold Very it nice. into a three. Yeah. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is fold this like this. Okay. Third the th oh no, the not third. even. We're folding them both like in. Like third in. Yeah. Then I'm taking this one and tucking oh. it into here. Yeah. I mean it's a little messy, but No, this is good. And you should then, see my linen closet if you think okay. that's messy. <laughs> I could do this a little tighter. Yeah. Then I take the pillowcase oh. and put it in like that. It's like a little package of, you should do some merchandising. <laughs> I feel like I see another career. Yes. I know. This is very good. You know, when I'm, when I'm at Hudson's Bay and I'm wandering the floor, you can see some salespeople that don't know who I'm at. They're like, why is he making the bed? <laughs> in the store. <laughs> Who is the man? And he's only what in that area. Doing? <laughs> so, oh, and that then. That is beautiful. Yeah, and then there's more. Oh, 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 okay, let's talk about these. Okay. What's happening here? If you're like me, and yeah. you have like guest bedrooms or things like that, and I use a lot of white sheets. Right, yes, yeah, so, so do I. I'm always like, you know, they come from the laundry, which is the queen, which is the king. Mm. Or, so you can get these online. And it's gonna tell and you. you Look at that! It's like you have a store in your house. That's beautiful. So it's great for the cottage, you know, if the cottage, and you have like all these bunk That's beds so and good. things like that. So all the queen, so look at that. That's beautiful. I love it. And those are just online, huh? You'd think I know what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you fake it really well. Okay, so you've stored them all? Oh, yes. Yeah, so let's talk about towels. Okay, so towels. That's beautiful and fluffy. fluffy. So when I design towels for Gluckstein Home, this is what's called the Dobby. The Dobby. So we design all different Dobbies. That's that decorative band mm -hmm. here. You see it in stripes and things like that. A lot of work goes into picking out Dobbies. I bet. And some towels have no Dobby. They just have this. Mm -hmm. But um, if you want it to look like it's from the store, yes. you basically, because I like the Dobby to show, you fold it in half. Okay. And then... Do you train all the employees, Brian? Um, they're pretty good. They're good at they're this. They're pretty good, but sometimes I catch them. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't really have a lot to do, can you just can fold you just that, all make these? that bed Thank a little you. better? And then, how did I do this? No, I did it wrong. You know. I did it this way. Oh. You know what? It always comes back to the thirds, though. That's what I'm noticing. Correct. Like, that's the difference or between do, how you do, do it and this, how I would do it. And this. Yeah, and, and then, then this. this. That's then beautiful. Have, yeah. That's gorgeous. Okay, lovely. So that's towels. Let's talk about the linen closet in general, because this is a beautiful way to set things up. If you've got any space in your laundry room, I don't. But if you have space in your laundry room, what a beautiful thing to do with your shelves. Yeah, so in your laundry room, you, some people have upper cabinets over their washer drawer. You can store things in there. Yeah. Or if you have a linen cupboard, um, you can use, uh, you want shelves. Yes. Now, uh, this is one of our Gluckstein elements at, at um, Home, Home Depot. Depot. Beautiful. And I like to have drawers in my linen closet, and we'll go over why. Um, but 
even if you have uppers, you want everything in bins. Right. You don't just want to open the door and it's full of stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You want to organize it. So all of these are from Ikea. So we've got uh, this for your beauty products, your extra toothpaste, your nice. extra shampoo. This goes in here. Mm -hmm. um, again, more beauty products and things like that. If you... If you live in a condo, yeah. um, it's great to do, you know, your storage. Yeah, your extension cords and, and the little felt pads and tea lights. Exactly. All of that in here. Yeah, beautiful. Um, you have a variety of different light bulbs. Mm -hmm. I like the light bulbs. And everything else is just nice and neat. I'm constantly showing the kids, look, this is where the toilet paper lives. It can look gorgeous. Go refill it. Go refill it. It can look beautiful. Brian Gluckstein, thank you so much for that thank lesson. Much. Let's go to break. We got more coming up. Thank We're gonna make some ravioli. when we made fillings for ravioli and I said we are actually going to be working with these fillings, now's the time. So we're gonna stuff, we're gonna shape, we're gonna cut. And uh, Brian Gluckstein is up for a challenge, so he's gonna join me. <laughs> well, and I'm we're actually gonna do it as a friendly competition. What I was were you not, gonna say? I'm not up for a challenge, I was forced. <laughs> he was voluntold. I was forced. <laughs> he was this voluntold. Okay, so Ma this is how it's gonna work. Massimo's gonna give us a little, um, he's gonna give us a little tutorial. Yeah. So yes. we, we know what we're long, doing. We need a long tutorial. <laughs> and now we're gonna have 25 seconds and we're gonna go head to head. Yeah, 25 seconds. <laughs> we're gonna go head to head with three yes. different kinds of ravioli. Good luck to us both. Okay, get your uh, piping bag. Yeah, okay. piping bag. I yeah, just, I'm gonna give you mine as soon as I show you what I'm doing. Okay. You better not be okay. giving him an advantage. I, All right, I these are typical right. agnolotti. Okay. Agnolotti del plin, and I'll Nothing. tell you why. Okay. I'm gonna use this dough over here. I'm okay. gonna put it right in the middle. A nice even line. He's like giving that. an advantage. Where's okay. my producer? Now you hold that. By, you hold it that. It looks impossible already. Oh, look, come look on. Look what he's doing. Look, it's the easiest one to do and the most easy not to screw up. Okay. Then you take about a size. Have you met me? <laughs> you take a size and you just oh, pinch in between. With my pinch nails? Pinch in between. Okay. It's like a pearl yeah, necklace. It's that's, like a necklace. You know what? I always hire cooks it's that like have big necklace. nails. <laughs> you and I don't belong here. Oh, oh. <laughs> Pay attention. Okay, uh, sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, and then you cut it. Like it's like being a school over here. With the then you cut scissors. it off. Yes. Well, special scissors, yeah. And then what you do is boom, hmm. and you take that off, oh, wow. and then Look you just cut it. How dare yeah. you say this is easy? This is very. This is the easest agnolotti you can make. We're okay. gonna have him full sheets after. This All right. and a bowl of broth, you. and go ahead, try Gorgeous. and make this. Let's try to put, repeat. We're putting 25 seconds Come on. on the clock. Let's you do ready it. to screw Show this me. up? Just that one. Just this one. Yeah. Start the clock. We got 25 okay. seconds. Yeah, I'll put Those mine are yours. You got to make okay. your own. Ready? I can't I'll, remember I'll what side so you, you put them. Okay. Oh, two hands. Two hands. Oh. Two. Okay. What do you I'm mean not going to say anything because we have judgment to come. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I couldn't remember. That's going to be the best part. I couldn't remember where you put the meat. What? Right oh. there, yeah. Hold on a second. Six, five, four. Hey, Morgana, we got it right here it. with those nails. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> We're going to let... Do you see how press, quickly press I went on, to press be on. cheated? Hold on a second. There I have go. one. I have one. Here. Look, it's there. perfect, actually. Hey, hey, look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. That's right on. That's mine. This is mine. Award, award winning. Oh, yours is good, too. Okay, for a beginner, not bad. Let me see. Who's, who's is Please this? Please judge it. That's mine. Crazy. This is somebody with long nails. Because <laughs> you couldn't pinch it. I thought he was going to say, this is a clear winner. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> fine, okay. fine, fine. Who's the winner? Who's uh, the winner? Well, I want to know. I, I think he got a writer. You know, fine. I'm sorry. Look at it. This is, this is more right. Who's booking this <laughs> Okay, I'll give you another easy one. I don't know if Massimo's Look, being booked for another take, take, segment here, but keep going. Well, I need... <laughs> What's that? I, I like Brian. Yeah, that's right. So, take a nice little <laughs> handful of this. Squeeze well, don't it. don't do it yet. We're gonna, just like that. Don't do it yet. Okay. You yeah. put it on, just like so. Okay. Then uh, my pasta... Uh, can you pass me the mister over there? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. What's in the mister? Uh, water. Oh, okay. Just uh, to cut that. So the pasta is easy. so yeah, that was sticky. Butter yeah, no, no. Like uh, so I have this little tool over here to help we, me just give that a little bit of shape because don't you don't want 
Well, I guess we're going to be using paying that. Are you guys paying attention? Yes, yes, we are. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're, we're I want watching. a note from your parents. I like that one. Yeah, we have and then you this. just... Uh, Cut oh, this off, wow. oh, that's and you make a, a classic uh, raviolo sorrentino, caprese, the sunshine right there. You see the sunshine? Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, right there. Boom. 25 that's easy. seconds on the clock. But we don't, Let's we only have one you only have one, but it doesn't matter. You can you do it. Well, I thought you were going to cut the yeah, pasta for us, so it was it a like little that. bit. So what did you I want do? me to cut it for you? Okay, I'll help you cut it. Well, I don't know. So I did this. Hey, okay. And then put this on top. Can I, I have flip that? it, flip it. Oh, that's uh, what it was you're the doing. Dry side. Okay. You see, you got the wet side. Oh. Ah! Eight, seven, I forgot to There you go. Six, five, there you go. Four, three, two, one. There you go. <laughs> it cuts, it cuts. Let me see. Oh my gosh, you, you did get it. We forgot to bit. miss it. We forgot to miss it. And also, it. I no, wanted to. I wanted that yeah. other. <laughs> you got the sticky side. You put it oh like this gosh, instead of flipping so it on. How do you know which is the sticky side? Well, the one that sticks. Oh. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Danny. Hold on a second. This is Brian's. It's all right. Oh, this Brian is mine. made it. <laughs> Brian made it round at least. <laughs> all right. All right. I is, is, that know, is that a ball? I think we know who won that round. Uh oh. Brian, you, you won that round. But we didn't uh, okay. have a mister. Uh, we didn't have our we didn't mister. Have a, that was but the yours was a circle. The mister. <laughs> oh my God. How much okay. time do I have? So you have enough. Two and a half. Let's okay. clean up this. All right, got Let's it. Let's clean it all out. Just Fashion. bring the sheet in front of you. Okay. Yeah, let me miss. Oh my God, how are they stuck together? Um, I did some stuff. Ah, okay. okay. You all take right, that. All right. Boom, boom. Yes. So it's really okay, one now piece. we're going to make a tortello a with tortello. seafood. What is, the, what is my fish uh, filling? Ah, uh, uh, here. Okay. Uh, you got okay. the piping bag. We okay, have I got the piping bag, but it doesn't matter. Know. Yeah, you know what? Let's do just two. Yeah, do two. That's, That's good all. enough, right? That's all I need. That's okay. all I need. To it show you. It smells good. Because it is. this it's one good. is the same as the one before, right? Yeah. You just go like that. Yeah. Okay, and then you, with your thumb, you you close it and you seal in uh -oh. all of the Easy. the air, just like that. Okay. Okay, and then all you have to do is, look how easy it is, like okay. that, like that, and like that. Okay, Boom. we got Th it. You cannot mess this up. Watch. Right. You Watch. cannot mess this up. <laughs> Come on. Twenty-five seconds. Oh, too on much the water. Clock. Go. You guys are giving it a bath. I know, yeah, you but can we use want this. it to stick. Use this. No, this is good. Okay, that's that's a good way. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. And was oh, it this my, way? You're right. Mine's uh, way too no, wet. No, the other way. I, I'm not gonna tell you actually. I uh, know. Okay. Cheating. I'm trying. Oh okay. no, I did it the wrong Eight, way. Seven, I just remembered. Six, five, four, three, two, one. So easy. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> Second, let me open this up. <laughs> oh my gosh, yours looks good. <laughs> Does his look the way it's supposed to look, though? Well, ah, uh, well, they're ravioli. These are uh, square ravioli. Okay, yeah, you all can right. put them with that one. I, I'll, I'll accept it. Let's see who the winner is. Is I'll it mine? It. Oh come on. <laughs> 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 or is it Brian's? That's Brian's. Oh my. Okay, obviously. Okay. He can go in the kitchen more than I can. We're going to be putting all of these polls up on our Instagram. So look out for that at City Line. Thank you so much for joining us, audience, and all of you at home. We'll see you tomorrow where I learn how to process.